Welcome back to the audiovisual learning series from Eve University. This video's topic is going to be rendering Eve models, and I am your instructor, Turin Bay. This class was originally held on February 11th, 2012, over my live stream, and as promised to those of you who did not make it, this is the video version of that class that I'll be posting onto YouTube. In this video, we're going to go over the most basic steps to get a model exported from the EVE Online client, converted, and then imported into a 3D model rendering program. The three pieces of software that we're going to be using are TriExporter, GIMP, and Blender. The reason we chose these is that they are absolutely free to use, which is in the budget range of somebody who's been unemployed for the last few years, like myself. And so I figure that everybody else should also be able to afford them. And the fact that they're also popular and easy to acquire is probably also a plus. And why would you want to do this? Well, you could use it for creating brand new EVE-related media. Anything from still images to composite an EVE-related scene, or something as simple as making your own custom desktop or signature. Or the more ambitious of you out there might be able to make animations and movies with these models in them. Just keep in mind that all these models and likenesses are the copyrighted property of Crowd Control Productions, CCP. So don't try to make anything besides what can be considered as EVE-based fan-made artwork. CCP has sanctioned the use of these models by fans in the past, but don't do anything stupid like trying to go out and claim it as your own. Try Exporter was written by a member of the EVE community, probably back with the Trinity expansion, and then was later modified in 2009 by another member of the EVE community. And yeah, it doesn't really have a logo, so I just made that one up. You can download it over at this URL. And don't worry, I'll, I'll add a link in the video description as well. There haven't been any updates since the 2009 version, but that's okay. The 2009 version still works, and we'll be using it for this class. There are also a couple of forum threads about TriExporter. The original one from long, long ago is still on the old forum system, which gives you an, an idea of how old it actually is. Um, a newer thread has started up with the new forums, but that really doesn't have a whole lot of new info in it. But I'll also link them in the description for this video for those of you who are interested. GIMP is the GNU Image Manipulation Program, and you can grab that by just heading over to GIMP.org and downloading it from there. The latest version is GIMP 2.6, and that's what we'll be using for this class. GIMP has been likened to other image editing programs such as, for example, Photoshop. So if you want to use another program, then you're more than welcome to do so. You'll just have to find a way to translate the steps that we show in this class into your particular image program. And finally, Blender, the 3D content creation suite. This is where we're going to be spending the bulk of our time in this class, and we'll make use of its modeling, texturing, and rendering facilities. I should mention about Blender, for those of you who are new to it, that it is pretty well known for having a, a rather steep learning curve. But those people who've become proficient at it, they really give it a lot of praise, saying that it's one of the most efficient and streamlined pieces of software of its kind. And it's been used to create some really amazing things. But I'm not going to turn this class into a basic tutorial on how to use any of these software packages, including Blender. Truth be told, I've only been using it for a little bit over three weeks myself, so it's not impossible to learn. So I encourage you all to just stick with it. And besides, if you really hated steep learning curves, you probably wouldn't be playing EVE Online to begin with. But just like with GIMP, it's not the only piece of software of its kind out there. So if you really wanted to, then you could go ahead and use, for example, 3D Studio, and just translate the steps that we teach here into your own software package. For this class, we're going to be using the brand new Hot Off The Presses Blender 2.62, which you could grab for yourself if you head over to blender.org. The first piece of software we'll use is TriExporter 2009. Um, all you'll need to do is extract it into its own folder, and it'll be ready to go. If you ever see any forum posts about this granny2.dll, um, don't worry about it. It comes automatically with TriExporter 2009. Those posts just refer to an older version of TriExporter, where this granny2.dll did not come inside of the archive. When you first run TriExporter, it's going to ask you to point it to your current EVE installation. So just do that, and then you'll be able to go straight to the front screen. To find the EVE models in TriExporter, we want to open up the Res folder, and beneath that, open up the DX9 folder. 
and then we see a folder called model. If we open up the model folder, we'll see all the a folder for all the different types of models that are available. Most people will be interested in ships, so we'll open up the ship folder. And we see that the ships are divided by faction. There's Amar, um, later on uh, there's Kaldari, Galente, Minmatar. And there's a lot of other factions here. Feel free to kind of browse around later on on your own to see what is available. But for now, we'll just go ahead and pick one at random. We'll start off with the Amar. And underneath Amar, we see that there are some rather cryptic named folders in here. There's AB1, 2, and 3. Those actually stand for Amar Battleship 1, Amar Battleship 2, and Amar Battleship 3. ABC is Amar Battle Cruiser, AC is Amar Cruiser, and so on and so forth down the line. So let's just pick, let's pick AC1, the Amar Cruiser 1 as our example. We'll open that up and we see that well there's three different types of files in here but the ones that we are interested in are first of all the .gr2 files. We see that there's a body shape.gr2 and then a body shape underscore low detail.gr2. Most of the folders will have at least these two type of gr2 files within them. There'll be you know some file name and then some file name underscore low detail. If we double click on the GR2 file we see that the model itself is shown in our preview window so we know that AC1 is actually an arbitrator. So awesome let's go ahead and just choose that to do our modeling for this class. And the low detail GR2 if you double click that it's just the same thing except with a lower poly count model. So most people are interested in the you know the high detail one, the um, AC2 body shape .gr2. Um, there are some kind of naming weirdness in some of these folders. Notice that we are in the AC1 folder and most things here are called AC1 but the models themselves are called AC2. Um, try not to let that throw you for a loop because if we actually go into AC2 there's some AC2 model files in here also, except instead of AC2 body shape, this, these are called AC2 mod 2 shape. And clicking on them we show that, oh hey, it's a Mahler model instead. So let's head on back to our arbitrator, the one that we've chosen to um, to export and render in this class. Now in order to export this file we want to select the GR2 file that we wish to export and then we want to go to file and choose export try model and then navigate to the directory where you want to export the file. Um, I've already called a directory or I've already created a directory called try renders so I'm just going to save it into there and as the save as type select 3ds files that's a 3d studio export type. Um, there are some tutorials that you might find that say that exporting to a .obj file will work but I've had not good luck with trying to export it to OBJ files. I've had much much better luck using the 3DS file format so that's what I use all the time. And for the file name you could name it anything you want. You could call it Amar Cruiser Arbitrator or anything at all but I like to stay with the um, the try exporter naming convention or actually that's the um, EVE Online naming convention, so I just call it AC1. So I just save it as AC1.3ds and it should tell you export to 3ds file completed. Now besides the model itself we are interested in getting some textures onto it. We don't want it to just look like this plain shape. So we are interested in these DDS files and in particular we are interested in the underscore D underscore ngs and underscore p dot dds files. Now we could export them uh, one at a time but the easiest way to do it is just to do it as a as an entire folder. So if you select the AC1 folder that contains all of this information and go to file and choose extract file slash directory then look for the folder where you want to extract them. I'm just gonna go find my try renders folder again. There it is. So I'm selecting the folder where I want to extract these DDS files and just press OK. 
and it'll say unstuff done. Now a few caveats when you select your ship. First of all, there are some models that Tri Exporter can just not handle, it seems. Um, maybe it needs to be updated for some of the more complex things and or some of the newer ships. So if you go to, let's see if I could remember one of them that was causing it trouble. One of the actually most of the stations actually give Tri Exporter some trouble. So if we go into station, let's say Minmatar MS Research, because we want to export a model for a, M a Minmatar Research Station. We see this MS Research GR2, and then there's the low detail version and the medium detail version. If we take a look at the model for the GR2 high detail version, we see that it doesn't look quite right. It's a little messed up. And obviously it works just fine in the game, so this must be a limitation of some sort with um, Tri Exporter. So if you ever see a model that looks just completely messed up like this, chances are it's not going to work. So you will want to go ahead and try to find another model. In this case though, instead of just the high res model, we have the medium and low detail models that we could choose from, and if we double click on medium detail, we see that it it still looks pretty good even at medium detail. So if we really wanted to um, to export a Minimatar research station, I would just go ahead and export the medium detail model. Another thing to watch out for is that not all models and or not all um, textures are going to be available to you. For example, none of the Tech 2 ships are going to be available with the tools that we have. The reason for that, I believe anyways, is that it goes back to these, well let's head back over to the ship folder, Amar, and AC1 was our arbitrator, right? So those of you who've played E for a while know that there are Tech 2 versions of the arbitrator, for example, the curse. And they, as far as I know anyways, they essentially just use the arbitrator model, but they have a, a custom um, a custom set of textures associated with them. But those textures, as far as I've been able to find, are not available in here. And what some people say is that for a lot of ships like that, that use you know the same model as a base version, but different textures, that's where these .red files come in. These are specialized files that are, that have to do specifically with the EVE Online rendering engine. And so unfortunately um, we don't have a way of we don't have a way of handling these dot red files so uh, unfortunately chances are then that we are only going to be able to render ourselves some the tech 1 versions of the ships if anybody does find an easy way to render the tech 2 versions and or comes across something that can actually handle these dot red files and you know, do the proper translations to allow us to render the um, the Tech 2 skins, essentially is what they are, then feel free to um, to let me know and I'll probably add it to a, a um, like an extended 102 version of this class. So those are a couple of things to watch out for, but um, in general, we'll just, we'll have all of the um, all of the Tech 1 ships available to us and a lot of the other structures as well, which is really, it's plenty to, to go by. So let's go ahead and move forward to the next step, which is the translation using GIMP. Now before we do anything with GIMP, we need a plugin for GIMP because what we need GIMP to do is open some DDS files, direct draw surface files, and GIMP by itself, by default, cannot open these files. So we need a plugin called DIMP, GIMP DDS. And you could find it over here at Google code.google.com slash p slash GIMP dash DDS. And it'll take you over to this page and it's really super simple to install. Just go over here to downloads and download the version that um, is applicable to you. I'm running in Windows, so I would want to download this GIMP DDS-Win32209.zip file. And then when I open it up, 
I will see a dds.exe and a readme file. The readme file will tell you exactly how to install it. You just want to put it into your lib gimp 2.0 plugins directory underneath your gimp directory where gimp was installed. So just take this dds.exe file and drop it into that directory and then run gimp. Alrighty, well GIMP uses a multi-window with floating palettes kind of model, so I figured that it would just be easier to show, all, show you all my entire desktop so that you could see everything all at once. So here we have GIMP open, but before we do anything in GIMP, we need to take a look at an old dev blog. In particular, this dev blog here, which was from February 2010. And this was the dev blog where CCP introduced the upcoming brand new um, Scorpion Battleship model. Now a little gem hidden inside of this dev blog is down here where you see this image here. They talk about something that they call the NGS file system. And they talk about how they are considering replacing this NGS file system with what they call the packed texture system. So this NGS file system are these three images here on the left. The packed texture system are these three images here on the right. It's been almost exactly two years now, and they still have not switched over to the packed texture file system. So all we're interested in this image is this left side here, the NGS file system. We're going to be coming back to this image and taking a look at what it says to as a reference for what we're going to be doing inside of GIMP. So I'm just going to go ahead and leave this image open in this web browser. And we'll switch back to GIMP and the first thing we'll do is we want to open three specific DDS files. So we're going to go to File, Open, and we'll navigate to where those DDS files are. Remember and try Exporter that we exported the entire AC1 directory as an you know all at once. So if we go down to here to try renders, we see that there's an AC1 directory underneath it. We want to open up the AC1 directory, and the DDS files that we're interested in are the ones that begin first of all with AC1 because they refer to the ship itself, and they end with underscore D, underscore NGS, and underscore P. So these are the three files, the three DDS files that we want to open up under Blender. So I just selected all three of those files and I'm going to press open. Now when it, it shows the load DDS dialog, what you'll want to do is make sure that load MIP maps is deselected. I'm not even sure if there are MIP maps associated with these files, but just in case there are, we don't want to load them. So make sure that load MIP maps is deselected and then press OK. And we have to do that three times, once for each file. And here we go. These are the three files that we just opened. Now our goal with GIMP is to export our five different maps that we are interested in that we can find in these DDS files. Those are the diffuse map, the specular map, the normal map, the light map, and well what CCP calls the paint map, but it is actually a reflection map. So in order to do that, first of all, let's switch over to your underscore D file, the AC1 and that ends with an underscore D dot DDS. And to find out what's in there, we go back to our reference. This is the underscore D stands for diffuse. So this is our diffuse texture map and we can see from this reference that it uses the red channel for diffuse red, green channel for diffuse green, blue channel for diffuse blue, and the alpha channel is a combined glow and transparency map. So we want to, we could pull out two different maps from this, the diffuse map and the combined glow and transparency map, which we'll, we'll be calling a light map for now. But um, I'll go over in detail what exactly this combined glow and transparency map means for us. So we'll go back to our underscore D file, underscore D dot DDS, and the first thing we want to do is 
we want to decompose this into its four different layers. So under Colors, go to Components, and choose Decompose. Now in the Decompose dialog, you want to make sure that RGBA is selected for the color model. Most of the time, it'll choose RGB by default, but that won't give us our A, or alpha channel. So make sure RGB, RGBA is selected, and make sure Decompose to Layers is checked and press OK. And that'll give us a brand new image that looks like this. Now this is actually just the red portion, the red layer. You'll notice here on the right that it actually decomposed all four channels into different layers. And since the layers are opaque, the only thing we could see right now is red. In order to see the green layer underneath it, we have to click on this eye icon to turn it off. And then we could see the green layer to see blue underneath that, we need to turn off the green layer so we can see the blue. And to see the alpha layer underneath that, we have to turn off blue. And here we see our alpha layer. Now, again, recall to our reference here that the alpha channel was the combined glow and transparency map. So, let's switch back and let's go ahead and export this because this is our, again, this is our light map. So go to File and choose Save a Copy. Now go to the directory where you want to save it. I could save it in the AC1 file, but just as a personal preference, I'd like to bring it down into Try Renders. And then since this is our light map, or our combined glow and transparency map, I'm going to call this AC1-Lights. I'm going to put a dot .png here because the way GIMP determines the file format that it is saving at is by the extension that we type here. So make sure to type the extension dot .png to save it as a PNG file. Now we'll be saving all of our maps as PNG files, as portable network graphics files, because first of all it's a lossless um, format so that we don't lose any of the details when we try to save this. If we try to save it as JPEG, it's going to um, lose some of the details. And also because Blender recognizes .png files. So I'll call this one ac1-lights.png. Press Save. And in the Export File dialog, I'm going to select Merge Visible Layers. Going back here to the layers, remember that we turned off, or we made invisible anyways, the red, green, and blue layers, so the only visible layer is the alpha layer, which is exactly wa what we want to export now. The alpha layer is our light map. So, merge visible layers selected, press export. You can keep all of these as default, it doesn't really matter, and just press save and now we just exported our light map or our combined glow and transparency map. Now also in this file if we go back to our reference we see that this file also contains our diffuse red, green, and blue channels. We want to export that but as a combined colored channel here not just as separate layers. So if we switch back to our ac1 underscore d dot dds file the one that we separated into um, multiple channels. If we turn off alpha, and again we could turn on red, green, and blue, We're, we'll only be able to see the red, but it doesn't really matter for this next step if these are visible. I just like to turn them on just to remind myself what I was doing. But we want to go back to the image and go to Colors, Components, and this time we want to Compose. And in the Compose dialog, now our color model, we want to be RGB, not RGBA, because we don't want to add the light map to this. We just want the diffuse. And these we'll leave as default, because it'll automatically just map red to red, map green to green, and map blue to blue. So we'll just press OK. That gives us a brand new image, and this is our combined diffuse map, with red, green, and blue all combined together so that we see them all as, well, the actual colors of the skin of the ship. And you can see it actually looks like, you know, the color that the ship is supposed to be. So it looks like we did it right. So we'll go to File, Save a Copy, and since we made 
this image basically brand new. Now we have to go navigate to where we want to save it. So I'm just going to find my Try Renders folder again. And right next to the AC1 lights.png, I'm going to save this one as AC1 diffuse.png because this is our diffuse map. And again, in the Save PNG dialog, just keep everything at default and press Save. There, now we extracted our light map and our diffuse map out of the underscore D file, so we could go ahead and close all of these. No need to save it. And this is our original underscore D file, so we'll go ahead and just close that because we're all done with it. Now, now we're back to our reference. We're going to next take a look at this file, the NGS texture map, which, as you could have probably guessed, is the file that has underscore NGS.dds. So this is the file that we want to process next. Again, we want to decompose it, so we go to Colors, Components, Decompose, make sure it's RGBA, and make sure it's decomposed to layers selected, and press OK. So now we have that file, but again, we have our four layers. And once again, these layers are opaque, so right now we could only see the red layer. If we turn it off, here's our green layer. If we turn green off, there's our blue layer, and if we turn blue off, there's our alpha layer. Now, back to our reference. What's in here? Well, the green and the alpha channels have our normal map X and normal map Y, and the blue channel has our specular map. The red channel has a submask map, but from what I've seen so far, that is not used for anything at all. I've never seen a, um, a texture file that actually uses the submap mask, so we're just going to go ahead and ignore that. And besides that, I'm not exactly sure what they mean by a submask map anyway. But we do want to pull out the specular and the normal X and normal Y out of this file. So first, let's pull out the specular map that's in our blue channel. Switch back to the separated file, the one that we separated into the RGBA channels. And let's turn off all of them, but turn on blue so that we could just see the blue channel. And as our reference told us, the blue channel was the specular map. So let's go to File, Save a Copy. Make sure that we, we are in our Try Renders folder or wherever we want to save all of these maps. And we will call this one ac1specular.png. Again, in the Export File dialog, only the blue layer is visible, and that is our specular map, so we want to merge visible layers. Press Export, keep the defaults, and press Save. And we have our specular map. Now comes the slightly tricky part. We want to grab the normal X and normal Y maps as a single map. They are in our green and alpha channel, so if we turn off our blue specular, turn on alpha, there's our normal Y, and if we turn on green, there's our normal X. The problem here is that Blender wants them not in the green and alpha channels, but in the red and green channels. So again, we are going to compose it. So go to Colors, Components, Compose. Compose it to RGB. But this time, again, the way Blender wants this PNG file is the red channel has to be the normal map X, but our normal map X, according to our reference, is the green channel. So for red, we want to select green. That'll bring the green channel of our, or the green layer of our original image into the red channel. And again, Blender wants the green channel to be the normal map Y, which, according to our reference, is the alpha channel in our separated layers. So we want, for green, we want to select alpha. 
So this green will map to the red channel. This alpha layer will map to the green channel. For the blue channel, we want to just choose mask value and set the mask to 255. And that will basically just set it so that Blender can ignore this blue channel completely. It's just going to blank it out to white. So press OK. And if you see this bright bluish thing with lots of dark blue and purplish highlights, that means you did it correctly, believe it or not. So if you do see this, let's go ahead and export the map. Go to File, Save a Copy. Again, we essentially made a brand new image, so now we have to navigate to our folder where we are saving all of these maps. And we will call this AC1 normal, because this is our normal map. .png, press save, and for, or keep the default settings for the PNG. And we've just exported our normal map. So, we're done with this NGS texture map, so let's go ahead and close that, close that, don't save, and then the original NGS.dds file, we're done with it so we could close that as well. Last file, according to our reference, is the paint texture map. So let's go to our last file under GIMP, and According to our reference again, we see that the red, green, and blue channels are just empty. They're black, black, black. And then the alpha channel is our mask map, which, as I stated earlier, is actually a reflection map, as far as I can tell. Since these are empty, we really don't need to do any special processing with these. All we have to do is, with this underscore p.dds file open, just go to File choose Save a Copy, go to the folder where we're saving all our maps, and just save it as, we'll call it ac1-reflection.png, and then press Save. Again, keep defaults. And that's it. We are done with our maps. So I'll just go ahead and close out Blender and close this out. And next, we'll take a look at Blender itself. Sorry, I closed out GIMP. So next, we'll take a look at Blender itself. All right, when you first fire up Blender, this is what you'll see by default. Just click anywhere to dismiss the splash screen. And again, I'm not going to turn this class into a beginner's guide to Blender. The class is going to be already long enough as it is with everything that we've got to go through. But I'll, as a um, as a little bit of help to anybody who's brand new with Blender, I'm going to just use all the default settings and all the default layouts and so on and so forth. There's going to be no customization done in Blender, so hopefully you'll at least be able to follow, um, follow the class because you'll be able to navigate your way around, even if you're just a beginner with Blender. So first thing we want to do is, well, we really don't want a cube right in the middle of our scene, so I'm just going to select this cube and delete it. Just hit X and then click on Delete. And the first thing we want to do is bring in our model. So in order to do that, just go to the File menu, choose Import, and we want to import a 3DS file, 3D Studio. So just click on that, navigate over to where we saved it. One moment while I try to remember where it was. Here we go, try renders. And then we just want to look for our ac1.3ds file, the thing that we originally exported from Try Exporter. So just select that and click on Import 3ds. And whoop, there we go, there's our model. Looks awesome, doesn't it? Well, the reason why it looks like that is because if we scroll out and out and out, and it's friggin' huge. So there's a few ways we could fix that. We could, you know, we could move the camera way the heck out there so that it, the whole thing will actually show up in the camera. But I usually just select it and 
S to scale it and then bring the size down so that it's within our default view area. So zoom in a little and we still see that it's kind of big. So whoops, didn't mean to do that. So we go ahead and scale it down a little bit more. If I go to the camera view, then I could kind of better judge how far down we want to scale it, maybe to about that. And then I'm going to go ahead and just rotate it about the x-axis so that I could align it a little bit better. And maybe scale it up a little bit more. And also do a little bit of cleanup here. I'm just going to move the camera so that it's better inside the field and then zoom in a bit so that we could see the full camera view. Okay, so we are set up to actually, well, do stuff. Uh, before we get started though, there's a couple of things that we want to change so that, well, it'll just make our, our life easier. First thing we want to change is down here with the, um, the shading method we want to click on that and change it to texture. Second thing we want to do is hit N to bring this up and go to where was it? Display I believe. Yes. Um, expand the display area, scroll down to the shading and change the, ch the shading to GLSL. And finally when we take a look at it kind of close up, we see that it's got a lot of, you know, we could see all the, the facets of the polys if we look close enough. And this is one of the ships where it should be, you know, nice and smooth, not have all these specific facets. If we were trying to render, say, a Kaldari ship, maybe we will want all these facets here. But for this Amar ship, especially for this particular Amar ship, we really want it to be smooth. So over here on the left, they changed things around on me a bit. Ah, never mind, it's because I didn't have the model itself selected. So once I select the model, over here on the left, you could see shading, and we'll just click on smooth, and that'll switch over to a smoother shading for us. And again, I'll just switch back to the camera view so you can see it better. I'll just go ahead and stay in this camera view for now, unless I need to, to rotate around a little bit. Okay, so let us go ahead and begin with the texturing process. Right click to select your model and then go here and go to the materials tab. Now every ship will have at least one predefined material to it. Some of them will have more. You can see that this one actually has four different materials called shape 0, shape 1, shape 2, and shape 3. Those are assigned to specific portions of the ship, but we are going to texture the entire ship at once. So we can't really use any of these. Or ac technically we're not sure if we could use any of those because I'm not sure which parts of the ship these different materials are associated. So what we're going to do is make a brand new material that encompasses the entire hull of the ship. To do that we're going to click on plus to add a new material slot and then click on new to add the actual new material to that slot. And then select the name here and change it to something more descriptive like hull. Now the first thing we want to do is associate that hull material to the entire model. So the way to do that is to select the entire model and go into edit mode. So I'm just going to hit tab to go into edit mode. You should see kind of the wireframe of the model there. And the entire model should be selected, but if it isn't then just hit A to select it, it toggles between full select and full deselect. And when it is fully selected, you'll see that below hull, below the hull material, are new buttons, assign, select, and deselect. Now you could press assign, and that assigns the hull material to the entire ship. So now that it's assigned, I could just hit tab again to exit edit mode, and now we could start assigning our materials. So in order to do that, first of all, select Hull. Remember that when you go to the Textures tab, it'll be the texture for whatever material you have selected here. So don't have, for example, Shape 1 or Shape 2 accidentally selected. Make sure that you have Hull selected. 
and then go to the textures tab and here we'll add our textures before we go on though I want to just go ahead and hit control S to save this and I'll save it over to my try renders folder just so that if something you know goes terribly wrong then we won't completely lose our work I'll just save it as ac1.blend and then click on save blender file okay let's go ahead and assign our textures the first texture we want to assign is our diffuse texture so select this first slot and then press plus new below it click here to change the texture name to let's call it just diffuse and then right below that change the type to image or movie remember that all of our te all of our textures are um, image files PNG image files so we changed it to image or movie and now we could go down here to the image section and press open and then go to where we have our textures well, we are already right there so we'll select our ac1-diffuse.png file and click open image and there we go now we have our nice Amar arbitrator wood carving which yeah it's kinda look like looks like that um, the reason it looks like that is because we don't have it mapped correctly so the next thing we have to do is scroll down in this panel and look for the mapping section it'll de default to generated for coordinates change that to UV and then by default it also selects the map as the UV map but I, uh, I like to go ahead and manually select it anyways just to be sure and then you probably have seen that there now it actually looks like a texture although it still looks kind of wrong doesn't it if we you know look at it and scroll around a bit and by the way it's kinda dark right now because our light is way up here so let me just quickly grab that light and bring it a little bit closer to our model to light it up a bit more but yeah you see that there is the texture there it looks kinda right but it looks a lot more wrong than right doesn't it and that is because the UV map is actually slightly incorrect now to correct that what we want to do is go up to here and choose a different layout the layout that we want to use is the default UV editing layout and what that will show us is our UV editing panel here along with our normal 3D view panel here now first thing we want to do is unwrap this so to do that just go well select the ship and go into edit mode and that will again select the entire ship but if it's not selected just hit A a couple times to make sure that the entire thing is selected and what that'll do is show our unwrapped um, polys into our UV editing edit panel on the left side here and now we will take a look at how exactly it's mapping so in this left panel go down to image and choose open image and we're trying to take a look at our diffuse map so again select ac1-diffuse.png and click on open image and scroll out if you need to if it's a little too close but then you see that it doesn't look quite right and if you take a look at some of the major features like for example there's a panel here that looks kind of like um, a chevron type shape that's kind of pointed down and to the right but when you take a look at the polys there's the shape here but it's kind of it's on the opposite side and pointed up and to the left so as you could probably guess the map itself is flipped over about the y-axis here or along the y-axis that's flipped about the x-axis um, so how the way we're going to fix that is instead of actually flipping all five of those maps what we're gonna do is actually just flip the um, the polys here flip our unwrapped polys so with our mouse over this left panel we'll just hit A to select them all 
And the fastest way, fastest and easiest way to do that is to go ahead and we're going to move this cursor here. You know, when we left click anywhere, we'll, we'll actually move the cursor, but we want to move it so that it's precisely along the halfway mark along the y axis. And the way to do that is to go down here to the cursor location section, click on the y value, and the resolution for these maps is 1024 by 1024. So we want to change this y value to 512 and just hit enter. And now our cursor is exactly at the 512 value for y. It's somewhere along x. It doesn't really matter where along the x axis it is. It could be way over here or way over here. It doesn't matter as long as it's at 512 y. And now with our entire um, our entire map selected with our entire unwrap selected. All we have to do is scale it by negative one about the y axis. So I'm going to hit S, Y, negative one. And then hit enter to commit it. And now it looks a lot better, doesn't it? The, this big shape here looks like it matches pretty well with the actual poly unwrap. There was that circular thing here, it matches the circular thing there. This big, you know, the big chevron sort of kind of shape that we were looking at earlier now matches the actual image. So it looks like we got it right. And now also we don't have to flip all five of those images because we're actually flipping the unwrap poly unmapping, the UV map basically. So now the UV map is going to match all five of the images. So, now that we're done with that, we'll just switch back to our default view, which is what we were looking at in the first place. We'll get out of edit mode and take a look at our ship. And it looks like, yep, it is actually mapping correctly now. All the little details along the surface look like they are in the correct place. I'll switch back to the camera view and it looks right. So excellent, we are now done with our diffuse map. Now the next thing we want to add is our normal map. So select the second slot and press the new button. Again, we want to change the type to image or movie and we'll change the name of this one to normal. Scroll down to the image section and press open and look for our normal map, AC1-normal, select it and press open image. And yay, now we have a nice purple look to our ship. The reason it looks like that is because this is a normal map, but we're trying to view it as a actual, you know, set of colors. And if you remember back from GIMP, um, that's what our normal map looked like. It's a blue with lots of purple inside of it. So in order to change that from a color map into a, a true normal map, there's two things we need to change. First of all, scroll down here and find image sampling, expand it, and select normal map in the, um, the normal map checkbox. And you could go ahead and close image sampling. Scroll down some more and look for the influence section turn off color, which is what is forcing that map to show up as colors in the first place, but then go down to geometry and turn on geometry normal. Now we're starting to see a little bit of the normal map in play right here, but it still looks a little bit off. And that's again because we forgot to change our mapping, or we haven't changed it yet. So here under mapping, under coordinates, instead of generated, change it to UV. And again, I like to change the regular, I mean the, the mapping to specifically say UV map. But now in our model, we can see that our normal map looks correct. It's showing, let's zoom in a little bit, but you know, it's showing the nice little normal bumps and stuff around where they actually should be on the ship. So, excellent. So next, let's add our specular map. 
So scroll back up to the list of textures and select the third slot. Press New. Rename that new texture to Specular. So that will add some specular highlights. Change the type again to image or movie. They are all image files. And down in the image section, press open. Look for our specular map, AC1-specular. Press open image. And again, we looks kind of wrong. And that's because, well, two things. First of all, we are looking at the specular map as um, as colors, as a color map again, but also always, always remember change your mapping from generated to UV. So now that we got the UV mapping correct, there's our specular map, but again, it's not really a color map, so down in the influence section, deselect color and turn on specular and then change blend to multiply. And another thing we should change is select RGB to intensity and change this value to pure white. So I'm just going to change RGB to 1. And there's our specular map. We see some specular highlighting as we move around and look at the ship. Now I should take this slight pause to mention one of the um, the general rules of 3D rendering is that we're setting a lot of default values here. You know, um, we've left first of all we've left the um, the default values for these checkboxes that we've set, but we also, for example, set the blend to multiply. We set the RGB to in intensity to um, to white. And those are just some basic values for a specular map, and we could always change them later. And remember the, the general rule for rendering is that the correct settings for all of this stuff is whatever makes your, your final render look good. So even though the, these are the, the default and, you know, quote, quote, correct values, al always feel free to come in here later on and change them just to make whatever look better. And we're probably going to do that, you know, at the end of the class after we apply all of our different textures to this. We you know we'll we'll go ahead and come back here and tweak some values to just to to make it look better if it doesn't look perfect already. So, next, we have our diffuse, normal, and specular. Let's add our light map. So, select the fourth slot plus new call this one lights and the type will change again to image or movie we will go to the image section and open our ac1-lights file .png. press open image wow nice lights huh in order to set our defaults for this correctly first of all remember mapping change from generated to UV and then set to the UV map but also for a light map, what we want to change is down here under influence. We want to set our diffuse color we want to keep selected, but we want to change the blend to add. And then the RGB to intensity to white. And there we begin to see some of our lights on our ship. And if we toggle this color checkbox on and off, we could see actually where they are appearing. So we'll keep that as is for now, but later on, again, the best settings are whatever makes your ship look the best in the end. So later on, after we apply all, all of these textures and, and we go and do our tweaking. I'll show you how to, for example, get these lights to show up brighter because right now they do appear kind of dull. So finally, our fifth map. We'll go up and select our fifth slot, press plus new, change it to the name of our fifth map, which is our reflection map. So I'll call it reflection. And as usual, change the type to image or movie. 
go to the image section and press open find out reflection.png and press open image and again it looks striated because our mapping is still set to generate it. Switch it to UV and then switch the map to UV map and before we fully correct this just take a note that the white areas here are where the reflective surfaces basically are going to be in the um, the final version of the rendering although we're not going to see it right away because well if you look around the ship there's really nothing to reflect so we'll just have to take it on faith that we we um, that the um, reflect map is actually set correctly but you could tell by this original mapping is that you know if you think back to the actual arbitrator in the game are these the more or less reflective surfaces compared to the other surfaces and if your answer is yes then you probably have your reflection mapping set correctly so the settings to set for a reflection mapping are we want to turn off color because we don't want white all over our ship but we want to go to shading and set ray mirror to on and for our blend we want to select multiply and RGB to intensity we want to set that to white alright and that is essentially it we are done at least we are done with this model so the rest now is basically just tweaking if you're just going to apply it to this single model so let's go ahead and go back in and spend a few minutes to do a little bit of tweaking um, first of all it does look kinda dim but let's go ahead and go back to our full camera thing for rendering I like to change it to um, a new window just so that anytime we we render it'll just open up a new window and it won't modify our layout but then we'll just click image and whoops it opened it up off screen so I'm just gonna move the window here so all of you could see that that is what our final render looks like a little bit drab but it does look at least correct but we could definitely spice it up a little so let's go ahead and do that let's go ahead and take some time to first of all how about our background I'm gonna go over to the world tab and one way I like to set the background is to first of all set the horizon color to full black, zenith color to full white and then doing nothing else that will give us a, a, a fully black background but that that will allow us to click on blend sky and that will give us a kind of gradient black to white background which looks pretty cool with um, with some ship setups with some ship renderings so if we go over to the scene and render it again bring the window in there that is what our render looks like now if we wanted a fully black background of course we could go back to the world and deselect blend sky so that here we see the background is fully black and we go back and render it and that is what it looks like with a fully black background it looks pretty nice actually kind of ominous although it would look kinda kinda better if these lights around the ship were a little bit brighter don't you think so let's go ahead and tweak that since I actually promised you that I would show you that earlier so again we're gonna go to materials to make sure that we have the hull material selected then go to textures select the lights texture and then scroll this entire panel down until we see the influence section and we are going to increase this color value beyond one which is actually allowed let's set it to say five and we immediately see that we have much much brighter lights we could actually keep increasing it if we want to make them a little ridiculously bright to like you know ten or maybe twenty five okay that's getting a little too weird so let's bring it down to five which looked whoops bring this color value down to 5 which looked pretty good and we'll go back to our scene level and render the image again and that's starting to look pretty good there although the rest of the ship itself looks a little bit dullish but mm, maybe that's the kind of mood you want because this is actually a, a fairly realistic level of lighting for this ship 
Um, the reason why it looks so much, much brighter in the game in EVE Online is because it has to for you to be able to, you know, to realistically see your ship and, you know, see which way you're facing and what you're doing and so on and so forth. There's actually um, probably a, a level of light emission on your ship when it, when it is in-game, which is what a lot of games do so that, you know, it's, it's something that you do for gameplay, whereas some of the default values that you'll get here are a little bit more realistic. Um, but again, the correct values are the ones that make it look best, not necessarily make it look, um, you know, realistic for a, a given set of parameters. So, for example, if we wanted it, if we wanted the ship itself to to look a little bit more goldish, this light up here is probably a white light, and yes, it definitely is a white light. Um, we could definitely change it to a more yellowish light if we wanted to and then maybe make it a tad bit brighter we'll bring up the energy to 1.5 and we'll see what that looks like when it's rendered there definitely a little bit more gold now maybe a little bit too goldish yellow but again depending on the kind of look that you're going for maybe that's what you really want Let's go ahead and do another little tweak here to just add some stars to the background of this. If you go to the World tab and scroll down a bit, you'll see that down near the bottom is a section called Stars. We'll expand that section, select Stars, and the settings that I like to use for stars to make it look a little bit more you know, realistic in the EVE sense, at least for this size of model, is I'm going to change the size to 0. Point, well actually 0. 0.2 the colors to 0. 0.1 minimum distance we want it quite a ways out there because we don't want stars appearing you know like 5 meters in front of our ship or anything like that so I'm just gonna set it to 25 which would be a ways out and I will set the separation to I forget what value I like here but I think 5 might be a good one and then we'll go back to the scene and render it and see what that looks like. Okay, maybe a few too many stars, maybe a little wider separation, but you're starting to get the idea. Let's go ahead and go back to that and change the separation to, say, 15. See if that's a better value for it. Go back to the scene and re-render and take a look. Well, okay, it's a lot more sparse out there, but for example, if we zoomed out on this image, then maybe it would you know, look a little bit more realistic. In fact, let's go ahead and do that. In our scene here, let's go to a view to the side of the camera, let's select the camera and drag it out a little further so it's further away from the ship. Now in the camera view, we'll adjust it so that we recenter the ship there and then again we'll render the image so okay not bad but again go ahead and just feel free to go back tweak the values a little bit here and there if you think this is a little too dark around this area maybe you want to put a second light out near the front of it let's well let's go ahead and do that let's just take this light clone it bring it near the front, maybe not too near. We don't want to make it seem like we're shining a flashlight on the thing. But another light closer to the front so that those shadows get a little bit more removed. And so on. Maybe our original light we want to be a little bit brighter. Or let's go ahead and change the light type to instead of a point light which it defaults to let's change it to a hemisphere light and we could already see in the preview that it's gonna really brighten up our scene so let's move it a little bit further out and we'll go ahead and keep that light there just to have a little bit of light towards the front and render that and now it's looking like so I still don't really like those star separation. I think 15 might have been a little too much. Let's bring it to 10 and re-render it real quick. 
and that looks a little better. So, again, those are just some of the tweaks that we are doing, but feel free to just go ahead and go go back, tweak all all the values you want, just get your scene to look to look the way you want, to look correct. And correct in this case being the way you want it to look, you know, awesome. Um, our camera is still a ways out. Let me just correct that again really quickly. Whoops. Bring it back in. Go to camera view to adjust. Maybe we're in a little too far this time. <laughs> yeah, slightly too far, but instead of adjusting the camera, let's adjust our model. Let's just scale it down a bit. That much. And then re-render the scene. And there we go. That looks pretty good, and I'll keep it that way for now. So one thing that I promised to come back and talk about is what CCP was calling the Combined Glow and Transparency Map. And this is something that you will encounter most likely for certain Minmatar ships. Like, for example, take a look at this Minmatar frigate. When I turn on, right now I have the lights texture selected, but I have it kind of turned off because I have the um, diffuse influence set to, well, nothing at all. But if I select it to turn on the lights, you'll notice that not just the lights turn on. Let me just toggle it a few times so that you could see. So it is turning on the lights, but it's also making a lot of other stuff glow, essentially. And that's because that map is actually exactly what CCP says it is. It, it's a combined glow and transparency map. And for those of you who are familiar with this particular ship, you know that these panels here do have a little bit of transparency to them. So what we aren't able to do, and what I don't know exactly how you we can do because um, there's not enough information behind it is how to how to translate the um, the transparency levels for that map like for example what exactly are CCP's rules for transparency levels our values from say 0 through 127 um, glow levels so that they get translated as lights and then maybe values from 128 to 255 are levels of transparency, maybe. But, um, you know, if it's some kind of rule like that, then it, it sounds like it's something that is procedural and is probably proprietary to the EVE Online rendering engine. You know, the, um, the EVE Online game itself knows how to translate those. If it is something more simple than that, you know, if it's something that maybe we could um, do something about in Blender. It, it, I would imagine that it, it might take some specialized module to be able to, to translate that because it doesn't sound like that's something that's um, standard, you know, some kind of in industry standard or anything. But if it is, then, and if somebody knows how to actually, you know, for example, make the lights actually glow without making the transparencies glow, and in fact, making the transparencies actual transparent. <laughs> then please definitely let me know how how you're able to do it and, and what the steps are to be able to um, to make it work that way. But until then, until we find a way to do that, uh, assuming there is a way to do that, um, you know, within Blender, then for now, in, basically we're not going to be able to correctly render ships with transparencies because the transparent areas like these panels here, they're just going to well, they're going to essentially glow because Blender is treating that entire map as a light map or a glow map. So that's another thing to watch out for and something to keep in mind when you're choosing what models and what ships to render. Some things just won't render correctly unless of course you just don't use the lights on them at all. You keep the ship completely dark and you just use external lights. Or if you really wanted to, you could just painstakingly go through that light map and darken everything that's supposed to go into a, you know these transparent panels, so that when you turn the um, the light map on, that only these sections here that actually are supposed to be emitting light will turn on. 
So that brings us to the end of our class. Um, I hope you guys learned from it and can now you know go back in and render your own scenes and your own model selections and set up some really good scenes. Um, I might do a follow-up to this class just like I did with the original live class. I had a, f um, a essentially a, a 102 portion of it, a, a follow-up class that that went into things such as decaling where you could put you know certain images like the the sample images that I had at, at the beginning of this video. So I might do that for uh, a second video class to follow this one. But again, thank you for joining me and remember that this is a video so if you if something went over your head or you didn't or you completely um, you know just zoned out on it, feel free to just go ahead and watch the video again and zip over to that portion of the video that you didn't quite understand. And as always, if you have any questions, if you're a member of Eve University, feel free to ask. This is kind of a specialized topic. There's probably not going to be a whole lot of people able to answer your question, but it's, it's still worth a try. Um, the best place would probably be in the forums. And that way, the people who do know the answers to your questions will be able to, um, to read your post at, at their leisure and be able to reply to it in the forums when, whenever they're on. Because if you, for example, try to ask in the chat.eme chat channel, um, chances are pretty good that nobody there at the time might be able to answer your questions. So again, good luck with your, your rendering. Have fun with it. And um, let's see a lot more cool custom scenes and settings and maybe even animations from you guys. This is Turn Bay signing out.